Hey friends, Ash here with Gensense, coming at you with a fragrance review. Hopefully everything looks a little bit brighter here. A couple of people have made uh, comments, made mentions about the videos being darker. It's because I have a different light set up. I actually think it looks better overall in terms of clarity, because previously I had a couple of box lights right here, and I could never quite get it right. I should probably hire some professional light guy to set this up for me. That really struggled coming out, but I've got a ring light now and I've cranked up the brightness a little bit. So it looks brighter in the screen. Anyway, today I'm taking a look at a Zara fragrance for you guys. It's this one, Zara Vibrant Wood. So the Zara Vibrant line is one that a lot of people have liked. Vibrant Leather, Vibrant Leather Cologne, I believe, and Vibrant Oud were the ones before this. If I'm incorrect, I apologize, but I think those are the ones. So this is the newest in the Vibrant line. I purchased this from Zara.com. It actually still has the price tag on there. $29.90. Zara always has that kind of pricing. They don't throw the extra nine on there. You think $29.99, but no, $29.90. In this video, I'm gonna give you guys a breakdown on the fragrance show you the presentation, let you know what I think about it. And most Zara fragrances are clones, so I'll let you know what this comes across as to me. We've got a lot to talk about, so let's jump into this. I do not have any notes on this one. This is one of those fragrances where I'm just kind of winging it, you could say. So, if this one comes across a little bit rambly, I apologize, it's because this is all just off the top of my head. First off, let's take a quick look at this presentation here. Here is a look at the box. You've got the name of the house, name of the fragrance right there on front. Zara on top of the box. Price tag on the side here, which I showed you before. And a little bit of information on the back of the box as well. Then on the bottom, you have your ingredient information and your batch code. And here's a look at the bottle. You can kind of see my deformed looking face coming through the bottle there. <laughs> so name of the fragrance, name of the house there. You have Zara on top of the cap. This is a magnetic cap. It's not a super strong magnet, but it is a nice little touch. And on the bottom, you've got your batch code etched into the glass and that, oh, there it is. It looked like it was coming through a little bit blurry. I know a lot of you guys out there love it when I show the, the bottle being sprayed, that way you can see how good the atomizer is. So I'll go ahead and waste a couple sprays of this one on my hand here. Now, hopefully you guys could make that out, but in my opinion, this is a pretty terrible atomizer. I almost sucked in a lot of that fragrance that was still in the air, but this is not a very good atomizer. It does this crappy kind of puff that comes out. It doesn't really get a whole lot of fragrance wherever you're spraying. And then this also has issues with a little bit of leakage around the atomizer. So long term, that's gonna be a bit of an issue because when you spray this fragrance over and over and over as time goes on, each time you're gonna get more and more leakage from underneath this collar right here. And what's gonna happen is it's eventually going to start eroding uh, the glass, assuming that this is not colored glass because a lot of times with these bottles, they'll actually start to flake. So if the fragrance gets on here and stays for a while, it'll flake on the glass or it'll just get these really nasty kind of streaks on the glass that are really hard to get out. Uh, and of course, you're also dealing with losing the fragrance, air getting into the fragrance, just a lot of potential issues with that. So this bottle that I have in my hand is not crimped very well, I would say. It uh, appears to be faulty, and I don't know if that's just my bottle or if that's something, an issue that this bottle style has. Yeah, that's, it's a terrible atomizer. It's really one of the worst atomizers, I think, that I've experienced in the past year or more. <laughs> I can't think of one off the top of my head that's this bad. And that was actually the first thing I thought of when I sprayed this fragrance. I was like, wow, that is a terrible atomizer. So all of that out of the way, I've got the notes pulled up here. It's just five, so I'll read them off from my phone. There's Bai Hao Yinzin Tea, Cardamom, Iris, Cedar, and leather. Five notes, that's very typical of Zara. Zara doesn't typically give very large note breakdowns at all. Oftentimes they'll only have three notes listed, a top, a mid, and a base. Now this one does open up with a little bit of a tea note and cardamom. 
So it's an interesting fragrance off the top. It doesn't immediately smell like another fragrance. So when I first sprayed this one on, I smelled it and I thought to myself, huh, that's different. That uh, doesn't smell like a clone. And I was puzzled for a moment because again, Zara typically, not always, but typically makes clone or inspired by type fragrances. So yeah, I kept smelling it and going, wow, that's actually pretty nice, different. Very different. The tea and the cardamom mix together well. It doesn't smell overly cheap. It's nice because this is ultimately a $30 fragrance. Technically 10 cents less than $30, but then you add in taxes and everything. Uh, but then this one pretty quickly off my skin begins to seg into a very well-known fragrance that is cardamom heavy. It's not immediate. It is a little bit subtle, but five, 10 minutes in, that tea steps back and steps a little further back, a little further back and lets the cardamom, a sweet, spicy cardamom, become the focal point of the fragrance. Vibrant Wood starts smelling like Yves Saint Laurent, La Nuit de Lome, which a lot of you out there are already owners of. And I would say most of you have probably at least smelled if you don't own it already. So yeah, Vibrant Wood very early on turns into essentially a La Nuit de Lome clone with a bit of a twist. And that twist is going to come from the iris and the leather. As this dries down more, the iris is going to become more prominent, but really it smells like a La Nuit de Lome clone just with those notes added in a bit. So you have some additional powder from the iris, uh, powdery floral. It doesn't come across like an overly makeup-y iris, but it does come across like a powdery iris a little bit similar to Dior Ohm, but reined in a little bit so it's almost like a twist of La Nuit de Lome and then uh, Dior Ohm or Dior Ohm Intense only without the iris coming across as lipsticky as makeupy. it's still there you can still pick it up but it's just not as prominent so through the mid that's basically what this one is going to be. It's going to be a La Nuit de Lome twist, if you want to call it that. A La Nuit de Lome clone uh, with a little bit of a, a variation in how it's coming across. And the iris and the leather here are what's going to give it that that slight Dior Homme intense-ish kind of vibe. So that's how I would describe it, kind of La Nuit de Lome with a twist, uh, with a dollop of Dior Homme intense. As this one hits the dry down, that cardamom does start to dissipate and go away. And then you're gonna get a bit of cedar in there with the iris. And the leather is not quite as prominent in the dry down either. So it's gonna be more of that uh, woods and iris once you hit the dry down. This one does smell really nice, in my opinion, for a Zara fragrance under 30 bucks. Again, the presentation, just looking at it, looks good. The glass, is nice and heavy. You can see there it's got a good size to it, a good shape to it. The uh, the cap is a nice touch. It's got Zara on the top there. It's magnetic, albeit not a, a great magnet, but still a nice touch. It makes it look classy. It doesn't have a sticker on the bottom. Everything is etched into the bottom of the glass. So when you look at this, it looks like a good fragrance. The atomizer is complete trash but there is a good amount to like here though the fragrance that it's most similar to for the strongest part of the fragrance is La Nuit de Lome, which is not insanely expensive but is still a fragrance that lots of people love and lots of people still wear so there's a lot to like about this for a lot of you out there now as far as the performance on this one it's not that great unfortunately off my skin part of the reason could be just again the atomizer and i know i keep saying that but really it it may come across better on camera but it's it's kind of a weak puff so you need to spray a couple more times than you usually would but with me wearing five six sprays of this i'm gonna get around four to five hours of longevity now that's not terrible but that's also not great i guess though a lot of you out there could say that La Nuit de Lome nowadays is not going to get you much more performance than that either in terms of longevity, and I wouldn't argue with you too much there. In terms of projection, it's good 
through the initial part of the mid and then it starts to sit a lot closer to the skin. By the time you hit the dry down, it's basically a skin scent. When you get to that part where it's more cedar and iris, it's not projecting very much at all. You have to be right on top of where you sprayed the fragrance in order to pick it up very well. This is a fragrance though that could work well if you spray your clothes. For example, if you're gonna go on a date, spray your clothes, it's going to linger for longer. It's not going to project out there heavily, but if somebody gets in close quarters and they smell it off of your clothing, it's gonna smell really nice. Obviously, with this coming across more, Lana Wee Delome, Dior Homme Intense, it's gonna be better suited for nighttime wear, in my opinion, cool weather, fall, winter. You could also wear it in the spring as well. And really, it's not a very loud fragrance, so you could pull it off in the summertime. Though, a lot of people in summer do like to go for those fresher, more refreshing, brisk kind of fragrances in the summer. So you're, if you're after that, during the summer, uh, the summer months, then this one may not be for you. But I do think, like I said, fall, winter, spring, during the night, great choice, and you could wear it during the day as well. Basically, wherever you'd wear La Nuit de Lome. I touched on this a little bit before, uh, but this is a fragrance that as far as Zara's go, I think it's good quality. Sometimes you'll get a Zara fragrance and it'll smell really synthetic, it'll smell cheap, uh, it won't come off very nice at all. It has kind of an alcohol tinge to it or it smells muddled. This one doesn't have those issues. It actually smells really nice as far as quality goes. I don't think too many people out there are gonna have issues with this one outside of the performance and of course the fact that it's not very unique. But I mean, it's a Zara fragrance, so I don't think many of you out there would be expecting that to begin with. It's a solid fragrance for under 30 bucks. Definitely a potential compliment getter if that's your kind of thing, which of course it should be considering what it's based off of. Zara Vibrant Wood. Not bad, but please Zara, fix this trash atomizer. If you smell this fragrance, guys, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. I do still read those. I know some people think that I don't. I just don't interact in them quite as much anymore because uh, sometimes it gets stressful when people leave hater comments. But seriously, guys, though, uh, do shoot me a comment below if you have smelled this. Just let me know what you think about it, if we're on the same page here, or if you think it's better or worse than I do. As always, thanks so much for all your support, guys. See you guys again tomorrow with another fragrance video. Take a shot every time I say guys at the end of my videos. You'll be hammered.